Welcome to the Heart of a Shepherd as we continue our study of the New Testament. It's a joy to be working our way through the Gospels, and uh, our scripture reading today is Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. I do invite you to open your Bible there and follow with me as we make our way through the scriptures. Now, this is the first of two video devotionals for today. A second will follow that will be on Matthew chapter 4. Well, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 3. Now, as we have seen, John the Baptist was a, a subject of prophecy and a pivotal figure in preceding and introducing Israel's long-awaited Messiah, Jesus Christ. Now, as with the other Gospels, Luke records the Baptist ministry from his perspective as a historian of the life and ministry of Christ. Now, Luke chapter 3 also recorded the genealogy of Christ the Messiah, which concluded with Adam, the first man. Now, consider then with me the ministry of John the Baptist, Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Now Luke gave the historical time and setting of the ministry of John the Baptist and the baptism of Jesus. Luke wrote, it was, and I quote, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, who had succeeded Augustus Caesar when he died in AD 14. Now Herod the Great, who was king of Galilee when Christ was born, died in 4 BC and was succeeded by two sons, Herod and Philip, and one Lysanias, uh, of whom little is known, Luke chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the aforementioned puts the date for the ministry of John the Baptist then around 29 AD. Now Luke also, in verse 2, identified Annas and Caiaphas as the high priest at that time. Now both men figure prominently in the scriptures, though they were not co high priest. You see, Rome had deposed Annas from being the high priest, and several sons followed him in that office, which had really become more political than spiritual by Christ's day. Now, Caiaphas, Annas' son-in-law, eventually succeeded him, and both men presided at the trial when Jesus was arrested and tried. Now, in previous Bible studies, we have considered John the Baptist's ministry. Now, therefore, I'm going to limit this devotional to just a few highlights. For instance, the setting of John's ministry was in the wilderness near the Jordan River. There in the desert, men and women of Jerusalem resorted to him and listened as he preached the forgiveness of sins, repentance, and baptism, Luke chapter 3 and verse 3. Now John's ministry fulfilled Isaiah's prophecies of one who would come warning the nation of judgment, verses 4 and 5, and then calling the people to salvation, and verse 6. Now, the Baptist's messages were strong and convicting. He condemned the hypocrisy of the religious leaders and identified them as poisonous vipers in verse 7. He heralded repentance and condemned the pride and self-righteousness of the Jews who boasted, we have Abraham, verse 8. He warned the people of God's imminent judgment should their lives not bear the fruit of righteousness in verse 9. And then when the people asked, quote, what shall we do then? John challenged them in verses 11 through 14 to live lives that would bear evidence of repentance. Now, John was not preaching a man might be saved by works, but that the fruit of one's salvation is proved by his good works, James 2 and verse 18. In other words, the fruit of righteousness is displayed when one shows care and compassion for those in need. In verse 11, whether it is to give a coat to one who has not or food to one who is hungry. And then when the publicans, that is the tax collectors, asked in verse 12, Master, what shall we do? We read that John answered in verse 13, exact no more than that which is appointed you. In other words, the fruit of righteousness is to be just and fair. 
We also read in verse 13 that there were soldiers who questioned John, and they, the soldiers, asked, What shall we do? And John commanded the soldiers to respect others, and to not be given to violence, to be just, be content with your wages, that is, do your work without complaints. And then verses 15 through 20, we have the Messiah's coming and John's imprisonment. Now, when the people wondered if John was the Messiah, we read in verse 16, He answered, One mightier that I cometh, the latcheth of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Now, while John baptized with water, John the Baptist foretold that Christ would baptize them with the Holy Ghost, and that the fire of conviction would be fanned, separating the wheat from the chaff. Verse 16 and verse 17. Now, verses 21 through 22, here we have Jesus Christ coming and ministry. And we see that it would soon eclipse the ministry of John the Baptist. And so after Jesus was baptized, we read that the Baptist was imprisoned by Herod the Tetrarch, for he had condemned that ruler's wickedness and adultery with his brother Philip's wife. So Herod was an adulterer, and John the Baptist, being, I guess you could say, politically challenged, he confronted the sin and the wickedness of King Herod. You know, as an asterisk, there are some today that we try to say, well, a pastor shouldn't be involved in politics or a preacher shouldn't say anything about the political culture in which we live. Well, then you're going to take odds with all of the Old Testament prophets and then coming into the New Testament with that of John the Baptist. And so, yes, when the ungodly and the wicked uh, politicians end up making a platform that is ungodly and immoral, we, in the ministry, have an obligation to speak the truth, even as John the Baptist. Then you'll notice, verse 23 through 38, the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now, the closing verses of Luke 3 does, do give us the genealogy of Christ through his mother, Mary's lineage. You might remember in Matthew chapter 1, we were given the genealogy of Christ, but that was through David and Joseph, his earthly father, the one a father who adopted him, who is known as the husband of Mary. Now, Jesus, we read in Luke 3 and verse 32, was of David's royal lineage, as was his mother Mary, and he was, too, a son of Abraham. But this particular genealogy traces the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ all the way back to the son of Adam, the first man who was identified as the son of God. Verse 38. Well, this is the end of the first of two Bible studies, uh, and I invite you uh, to look forward to the second one. It will be taken from Matthew chapter 4. God bless you, and bye-bye.